Hey everyone, I've heard some people say that we are little gods because Jesus said so. He said that you are little gods. Did he really say it? And if he did, what did he mean exactly by it? That's what we're going to look at in this video. Let's get to it. All right, now are we little gods? You know, some people preach that in churches, especially in the Word of Faith movement. But is it true? Of course not. We are not little gods. That is the old lie of Satan. Genesis 3 verse 5. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, their eyes were opened to the reality of evil, but they also realized that they are not gods. This was just a half-truth from Satan. It was a lie. But what did Jesus say? Because he did say it. Well, he was quoting Psalm 82 verse 6. You are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Now, if you read this in its context, as you should always read scripture in its context, never take just as one scripture, one verse out of context, but read the whole chapter. And then compare that with other books in the Bible as well to understand the truth more. And if you read this part, you see that he was referring to certain people who were put in authority positions that had power almost like God's over other people because they were judging other people. Verse 1 to 5 says, God has taken His place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, He holds judgment. How long will He judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. And then verse 6 says, I said, you are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. He's actually saying here that you're acting like gods, but you're just mere humans. Because listen to the verse he says right after this verse. Verse 7, Nevertheless, like men you shall die and fall like any prince. You know, there are some people in this world that have too much power. Even back in the day, there were some men, kings, that thought too much about themselves as if they were like gods. And they were kind of like gods with having authority to decide if they could kill someone or not. That's how much power they had. And this psalm was written against the misuse of power. It was written for the weak. Remember, verse 2 to 5 says, How long will you judge unjustly? and show partiality to the wicked, give justice to the weak and the fatherless, maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute, rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Now, why did Jesus say it? In what context did He use it? Well, let's go and read. The Jews picked up stones again to stone Him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father, for which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world. You are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God. Do you get it? Jesus said that He is the Son of God and then they wanted to stone Him for it. They wanted to kill Him. But then He reminded them of their own scriptures referring to men of authority positions as gods. So how can they want to stone Him now for saying that He is the Son of God, which God the Father has sent? Verse 35, If he called men gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming? 
because I said I am the Son of God. So he's basically just proving to them that they have no right to stone him. If you think that you are a little God, then let me ask you this. Can you create an animal out of nothing? Can you breathe without oxygen and move outside of Earth among the stars? Do you know what everyone is doing right now in, let's say, Japan? And what each person's story is? And what they are feeling and thinking right at this moment? Do you even care? No, you are not God. Be careful of worshipping yourself, self-worship. Starting to love yourself more and more and more, starting to idolize yourself, thinking even that you are a little God. Because that will happen to a lot of people. It's happening right now. It's happening more and more the closer we get to the end times. 2 Timothy 3 verse 1. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. No, we cannot even begin to comprehend how big God is. We cannot compare ourselves to Him. Don't bring God down to your level. Most humans can't even control their own lives. And our bodies are so fragile. We get ill so easily. <laughs> and in the mornings when you wake up, you're in a lot of pain when you step on your child's Legos. <laughs> Psalm 8 verse 4 to 6 says, What is man that you are mindful of him? and the Son of Man, that you care for Him. Yet you have made Him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned Him with glory and honor. Yes, we are made in God's image. That is true. He gave us dominion over the plants and the animals. And we do have God's Spirit in us as reborn Christians. But we are not gods. I'll say it again. Don't be arrogant. Don't try to bring God down to your level. You can't even understand Him. You can't comprehend how big He is with your small three-pound brain. You are the creation, not the Creator. Now, if you have any other questions, watch these videos here, these playlists, and it will help you out. And always remember, God loves you. And I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.